Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this virtual college exploration program in partnership with Colleges That Change Lives. This is the Whitman College information session. Um, before I pass it over to the presenters at Whitman, I'm going to get us started with some housekeeping items. We do have more sessions with Colleges That Change Lives through Tuesday evening. Um, so feel free to continue to check out the schedule if you're interested in connecting with more colleges and universities these next four days. When you do register for these sessions, you get a barcode in that confirmation email, but know that that barcode is not necessary for any of the virtual events that you participate in. And we are recording all of these sessions and posting them to our website shortly after the session concludes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So whether you want to rewatch a session you uh, participated live in or watch one you may have missed, just check back on our website and we post those very quickly. And then you'll notice that you can see and hear the Whitman team. Unfortunately, they cannot see or hear you all. This is webinar style format. So any questions you have throughout the presentation, feel free to type those into the Q&A box and the presenters will do their best to address those throughout the session. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Luis to get us started with Whitman. Thanks so much. All right, um, fellow panelists, is my screen share activated? Perfect. All right. Thank you all so much for being here today. Um, and thank you so much for that introduction. We are with Whitman College in Walla Walla, Washington. Um, and we're very excited to share a little bit more about Whitman with you today. Uh, before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself and open the floor to my fellow panelists who will both um, be speaking to you later. My name is Louise Carneas. I'm an assistant director of admission at Whitman. Um, and I support with both domestic and international recruitment. My name is Fernando. I'm an assistant director of admissions, um, and I recruit students from the South Bay Area, California, uh, Texas, Eastern Washington, and Oklahoma, or in Arizona. And I'm Jordan. I'm a senior intern in the Office of Admissions. All right. Um, without further ado, let's get started. So as I mentioned, Whitman uh, is in Walla Walla, Washington, the town is so nice, they named it twice. Whitman is a small liberal arts college um, of about 1500 students total, all undergraduate. We are co-educational and you can find some more um, facts about Whitman at the bottom of this slideshow. This banner will be in um, almost every slide if you want to take some time reading through it. Um, but before I talk a little bit more about Whitman, I want to talk about, I don't know, you've heard some version of this many, many times, but like your college search is likely not going the way you envisioned it. Maybe at this time you would have wanted to be um, at a college fair where you could talk to school after school and ask your specific questions and kind of go around and suss out what might be the best fitter program for you um, in just a quick one hour span. Um, you also might have been exploring our campus and on behalf of admission officers everywhere I would like to say that we also wish those things were happening we would love to be meeting up with you in your hometowns visiting your high schools and we would of course love to show you around our campuses um, however instead we are all having nightmares about our camera being turned on spontaneously in the middle of a webinar so um, just to um, address the elephant in the room we're really um, here to help you uh, virtually as best we can and um, we have a lot of other virtual options and tours that you can partake in and um, opportunities to interact with us more live uh, not in a webinar format however today you will be able to ask questions in the Q&A and should do so at any point throughout the presentation um, after we finish sharing a bit about Whitman we'd like to devote um, probably the last at least um, 15 minutes maybe 20 minutes just to answering your questions um, but one important piece about Whitman is its location and that is something that can be a little bit difficult to translate to Zoom. Um, so I'm going to devote some time to talking about Walla Walla, Washington. We are located in the eastern corner of Washington State um, in the Pacific Northwest, right? So we're about a four hour drive or just a little under an hour flight from Seattle. Um, you can see this map here, especially relevant if you are coming to us from East Asia. It looks like that is the trajectory of this plane. But um, essentially we are about four hours away from multiple major cities, um, Seattle, Portland, Boise, Idaho, really up and coming hub um, in central Idaho. So we are, um, 
in a more decidedly rural location, cities are accessible, but most of the amenities and experiences that you will have at Whitman um, during the typical school year um, will be on our campus and in our town. Walla Walla is a town of about 34,000, as you can see here. Um, it is a a smaller town and as I mentioned we are at some distance from large major cities um, though there is an airport many amenities that I'll go into in a moment um, but Walla Walla is not really a college town it might feel like that even when you are on campus um, but I think of a college town as a place where all the resources amenities and most importantly uh, most of the jobs in the local area are somehow affiliated with the college Whitman is only 1500 students with several hundred staff and faculty members but that does not account for all of the employment opportunities, um, which I think actually serves students really, really well. Um, you don't want to, you know, if, if you want to have like some professional development and some connections to the community, I think it's really important that like other industries and ways of life are represented in your area. So um, in that way, the town feels small, but it definitely feels like a place of opportunity. Um, Whitman has a beautiful downtown and another way that in which it can feel like a college town is just how close um, you are as a Whitman student to restaurants, shops, and to professional development opportunities and internships. There are um, or the major hospital uh, in Walla Walla County is just down the street, um, as well as the oldest bank west of the Mississippi River. So I've been told Baker Boyer, if you're interested in working in pre-med, pre-business, pre-engineering, pre-law, there are many opportunities for that in Walla Walla. There are also a lot of really um, uh, some site specific nonprofit organizations and like I said, these are all going to be easily accessible from campus. We're not competing with other um, elite universities and colleges to have opportunities in uh, the community, um, which I think is a big plus um, and it's very beautiful, um, very walkable, very accessible. Um, there are arts and culture arts and cultural events and opportunities um, that you will not need to leave behind if you're nervous about leaving a city to come to a place that's um, a bit more rural. Another benefit of coming to Eastern Washington is you might associate the Pacific Northwest um, with some rain um, based on uh, weather patterns in cities like Portland and Seattle. Uh, Walla Walla being on the other side of the Cascade Mountain Range still has access to those mountains, but the weather is um, relatively speaking, I think a little bit better or at least a little bit more dynamic. Um, the rain is great. I grew up in Portland. However, one thing that I've come to really appreciate about Walla Walla in the now eight years that I have lived there is um, how you can always tell what time of year it is. You can tell when you're driving into town and you look at the mountains, you can see the blues in the bottom right corner of the slideshow. Um, we're located kind of in the foothills of the Blue Mountains and at the edge of the Palouse. Those both change um, into bright greens in the springs and then turn kind of brown and gold in the summers and fall. Um, very beautiful. The trees on campus also change. So what you see is a lot of dramatic foliage in the fall, um, a bit of snow in the winter. It's not going to be inhibitive. Uh, students are cross country skiing across Ankeny Field and um, it's a good bit of fun that ends hopefully at an appropriate time for those of you who don't want to be walking around in the snow for three months of the year. Um, spring is beautiful and most people I would say is favorite season just because the flowers are wonderful. The weather is great. Again, lots of sunshine in Walla Walla. Um, summers are hot. We are all living that reality right now, but if students don't want to be in Walla Walla for the summer, though it is a really fun experience, um, you can beat the heat and go elsewhere. Another thing about our like another thing about our location is um, our proximity to kind of outdoor opportunities. I didn't consider myself the most outdoorsy person when I arrived at Whitman and when I came to Walla Walla. Um, however, like I said, you are always so aware of what's going on around you in terms of uh, what season it is. You're so close to the mountains. You're close to the river, the Columbia River Gorge. Um, you're able to um, get to hiking, backpacking, rock climbing, whitewater rafting really within um, just an hour or so of the college and the outdoor program is a resource on Whitman's campus for students who are well versed in the outdoors and want to lead trips and get really involved. And it's also a great resource for students who have no experience whatsoever, but just want to take advantage of their location. Every student gets a stipend to spend there. And this is one way that you might feel if you are really excited about exploring the outdoors, exploring a new corner of the world, um, you're not going to feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. You're actually going to feel like you're in a very opportune location where you can do different things all seasons of the year. Um, and this is a picture of the hot air balloon. Um, 
lunch that happens every October in Walla Walla, which is a favorite tradition for Whitman students who can wake up early enough. It can be a little bit challenging. Um, but as I mentioned, Whitman is really shaped by its location, um, shaped by the Blue Mountains, the Palouse, the river. Um, you're always kind of aware of where you're at. And Walla Walla also really influences um, our campus. So though there are many small, excellent private liberal arts colleges in the world, um, I think that Whitman is a really unique one and occupies a really unique spot. Um, to talk about a little bit more about what sets us apart, Fernando is going to walk you through a couple of programs on campus. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass on the reins. And I will be back later. So yes, I'll be talking a little bit more in depth about a few programs on campus. So I'm kind of going to be breaking this down into three sections. First, talking a little bit about our inter interdisciplinary, uh, interdisciplinary curriculum. Uh, secondly, some hands-on learning opportunities to so give you some examples of that. And third, a little bit more about kind of about how our engaged community and things that our students get involved in. Um, so let's start off with a little bit about our interdisciplinary approach. Uh, you can find a lot of this um, through things like our environmental studies program, um, which if we can move on to the next slide, um, can uh, is something that's often combined with many other um, many other majors throughout across all all sorts of different departments on campus. Um, they're all kind of listed on the slide, but it's just different things that we can be combined. Um, kind of in like a double major format. I would say that double majoring is something that's a little bit easier to do at Whitman, um, but just because we encourage our students to kind of seek out those sorts of interdisciplinary um, learning opportunities um, instead of just simply focusing on one thing. Because you know, it, out you know, in the real world, uh, a lot of these things intertwine. A lot of these things kind of come into play um, pretty often. So things like say like. Um, in economics, you know, and practical studies can be very important in dealing with some of the uh, current issues uh, that are going on in that field. Um, other combinations outside of environmental studies are possible. Um, so we have things like physics and astronomy uh, that can be combined uh, because those are very often used together. Um, so yeah, you do have a lot of options whenever it comes to kind of those inter interdisciplinary combined majors. We also do have a plethora of off-campus studies programs, including semester-long um, or kind of shorter crossroads experiences where you can actually go abroad for a shorter period of time. And also, um, a lot of these options are not just like, confined to one or two departments, like they are throughout nearly all of our uh, departments. And you have a lot of access to these programs. There's uh, over 80 different uh, off-campus studies opportunities. Um, so you're going to have the opportunity to hopefully, um, you know, get some hands-on learning that way as well. Um, and these off-campus studies opportunities are supported uh, through things like our multicultural interest housing. Um, you can see some of the, the interest house community on the bottom left there. Um, like say, for example, if you're going to like a Spanish-speaking country, uh, you might turn to uh, the interest house called like La Casa Hispana for some additional language support. Or say, if you're going to Germany, uh, go to Das Deutsche Haus to get a little bit more uh, additional support that way as well. So really, they're there to help our students get very well prepared um, to go abroad. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty helpful that way, as well as learning a lot about the cultural the cultural aspects of those countries. Um, but yeah, let, let's move on a little bit onto our kind of more like hands-on and unique technology and natural science opportunities. Um, students often come together through things like the Pre-Health Society that sends just under about 40 students to medical school each year. Uh, Pre-Med is like a track here at Whitman. It's not a specific major just because you don't have to major in a specific thing to go on to med school. Um, though oftentimes you do still end up taking something in the sciences. Um, but they have just a myriad of research partnerships with, with well-renowned organizations like the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. Uh, Mayo Clinic, Beckman Scholars, there's a lot of really great opportunities um, to really get out there and, you know, get, the, get your foot in the door in a lot of these really great organizations um, and kind of, you know, be a step ahead uh, as a student um, and then hopefully as a professional soon after. Um, also, like say, for example, just to kind of narrow it down to one department, specifically our STEM departments, uh, we have things like the STEM Hub, uh, which is a center for group studying, tutoring sessions, and collaborative learning. It's a place that's really designed to ensure that students of like all backgrounds can feel supported in pursuing STEM majors. 
And that's not unique to just our STEM program. A lot of our other departments have very similar um, kind of hub-like areas or programs uh, where students can come together in a more of a collaborative learning environment. Instead of it being kind of competitive between students, we really do like seeing our students work together on some of these things. Um, also, our location really allows for some really unrivaled like, field research opportunities throughout the Pacific Northwest. Like say, for example, like the biology department um, can you know, hop over to the Pacific or you know, go over to the, the mountains very easily. Um, so you have some really great opportunities to do that. Um, but moving on to more of our kind of engagements, uh, this is going to be both, both our um, community action and second. Oops, sorry, I was about to sneeze. <laughs> um, yeah, community action and professional development uh, programs. Uh, one of the really big ones comes out of the Student Engagement Center. Uh, specifically, they win an internship grant, which is one of the ways that you can help fund your internship. Because nowadays, a lot of internships might be unpaid, and it's not super fun not getting paid uh, for a lot of work. Uh, so the Whitman Internship Grant is there to support you um, and provide, you know, between $3,000 for a domestic internship or up to $5,000 uh, for an international internship, you have a lot of different ways to help fund uh, these unpaid internships and make sure that there's no financial barrier to them. Because oftentimes these internships take place all over both you know, the US but also the world. Um, and so we want to remove those financial barriers as much as possible so that they're open for just about anybody on campus. 94% uh, of students who apply for the Whitman Internship Grant receive it. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of our students are able to utilize those funds um, for their unpaid internships. We also do have um, a really, really great ways to get you connected to the Walla Walla community. Say for example, the Consulting Corps, uh, which connects students to Walla Walla community through uh, different management consulting positions um, with the aim of kind of benefiting nonprofits in the area. Um, that way, um, you're getting connected to nonprofits, um, you're getting that real world experience, uh, that consulting experience is going to hopefully you know, pay off eventually in a, a job um, in, a, say, a similar field. Also, things like the community fellows programs, where you're not just uh, interning at a location, um, a local, you know, more prominent wall, wall organization, but you're also helping to address a lot of the uh, economic, social, or you know, cultural um, challenges uh, that are in Walla Walla. So you're getting some really great hands-on learning experiences on dealing with some of those issues um, in you know, a, a slightly smaller area, so that way you can maybe upscale that to some of those larger uh, cities throughout the country. The SEC or the Student Engagement Center also has a pretty interesting four-phase plan that really helps your students you know, go on to get jobs. Um, those would be uh, so they help you with things like individualizing uh, your resume and cover letter. They go counsel you through that entire process, um, as well as uh, facilitating our alumni networking opportunities through our Witties Helping Witties program. So you're able to get a lot of really great um, help uh, in kind of breaking into some of these um, industries. Um, and they have some also pre-health, pre-law, and pre-business advising. So that way, say for like pre-health or pre-law, you can get ready for things like the MCAT, the LSAT, and those sorts of things. Um, but yeah, with that, I'll pass it on to uh, Jordan, who's going to be able to talk a little bit more about um, his experiences um, and engagement of our students. Yeah, hi, everyone. Um, so Fernando and Louise just told you all these things about Whitman, but I guess I'm here to really um, confirm that. So um, this year, I had the honor of serving as the exec director of the Power and Privilege Symposium. Um, so just to give some context, that's me, you know, looking handsome as ever. Um, and the PNP Symposium is um, a two-day um, event, which happens in February, right after starting on that 
Thursday after MLK Day, um, so that Thursday and Friday. Um, and really, the symposium seeks to challenge the Whitman community's pre-existing worldviews based on a better understanding of the experiences of others. Um, so during the week of events leading up to the symposium, um, students, faculty, staff, and community members are encouraged to speak to their lived experiences and how those experiences have shaped their worldviews. Um, the symposium strives to educate the community about the power structures prevailing around the world, including the college itself, right, which isn't perfect, um, questioning many of the paradigms and assumptions which we all grew up with. Um, the symposium is meant to be a safe space where members of the Whitman community can express their experiences on campus. And as you can see, we had the honor of having the Angela Davis um, come and talk as our keynote speaker this year. Um, so PNP is a huge event, right? And while it might offer a different depiction of the Whitman community, that sense of belonging can also be found in the academic sense of things that Fernanda just touched on. I mean, at Whitman, professors are super smart, understanding and inclusive of their students. And you know, as a politics major, some of my most memorable moments um, at Whitman included chatting about capitalism and Marxism with profs and other students. Um, and being receptive of others' opinions is a vital part of our Whitman community. And just to wrap up, wrap things up, you know, you're seeing those pictures, but as a Black international student, my involvement in the symposium and in other organizations on campus, such as the Men of Color Association, Greek Life, the Debate Society, these have all significantly shaped my views on community and activism. As someone who wants to be a prospective lawyer, I'll take the lessons I've learned about empathy, organizing, allyship with me into the real world. Um, and the support from the Whitman community that I've witnessed during my time here has been overwhelming and unlike anything I've ever been privy to. Um, the weird but cool thing about Whitman is that while there's tons of room for personal space and time, you never have to be alone. And it's this collective sense of unity that makes me proud to be a witty. So I'll hand it over back to Luis. Thank you so much, Jordan. And um, we will all be here to answer questions just after I talk about the admission and financial aid process a little bit. Um, as we discussed before, this is going to be kind of a unique year um, for applying to colleges. But as with every year, like Whitman admission officers are really um, trained and seasoned for um, reading applications in context and having a really holistic review process, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, we are a common application school. And um, at this point, though, we may have um, a Whitman specific application for some special cases. Um, the common application is the way that you will um, apply to the college. Um, you can see our three deadlines there, early decision one, early decision two, which are no different. Um, they are both uh, the binding early decision agreement um, and then regular decision is also January 15th. Um, this year, it may feel difficult to want to apply early decision to a college um, when you don't know, maybe you haven't visited the campus, maybe you're just feeling a little bit uncertain in general um, we totally understand that it's not the right choice for everyone, um, but we are happy to talk about, you know, all the ways that your comfort and um, is more important than whatever um, or whatever agreement you're signing if you do want to just know which college or if you are really excited about Whitman, if you want to hear back from us early, if we're really at the top of your list, um, we'll work with you to make you feel comfortable applying early decision, including in the form of our financial aid guarantee. Um, I'll talk a bit more about what we require in terms of financial aid application components, but um, essentially um, starting now and the form will be um, revamped on October 1st, you can um, submit your um, kind of an early like application to Whitman, including your transcript test scores, if you have them, and um, a little bit of more information and we'll tell you exactly what you would receive um, at this time in the form of a merit scholarship. And if you're seeking need based financial aid after the CSS profile and FAFSA become available on October 1st, you will also be able to get an accurate estimate of your um, accurate estimate. 
I don't know if that's an oxymoron. You'll be able to get an actual preview of your financial, uh, financial aid package. So this is different from a net price calculator, which relies on averages based on um, students in similar income brackets uh, in the past. This is a package for you that you would receive if admitted to Whitman. Um, so that's one way that we're trying to bring some certainty to this time that we are living in, which is uncertain, we've all heard it, and also frankly terrible. So in terms of components of your application, um, of this common application, a lot of it is pretty straightforward and we do have some information about exactly kind of how we approach this review process on our website and what the components are broken down. There will be some biographical information and educational history. There will also be um, a chance to list off your extracurriculars, a personal essay, and though these pieces won't actually pass directly through your hands, um, the two letters of recommendation from one counselor and one teacher at least, and uh, your high school transcript. I hesitate to rank these in any order. I did mention academic credentials um, a little bit later. We're still really, um, like it's very important to us that you're set up for academic success on Whitman's campus. But as I mentioned, our review process is very holistic and there are so many patterns and trends impacting a student's transcript and a student's performance throughout high school. You may think that you have some degree of control and feel that you have control over your grades, which you do perhaps more so than one morning of testing, um, but there are still so many factors that you that are out of your control, um, different levels of rigor at your high school, different extracurriculars that you've been involved in. We are always looking for patterns and trends. And as I mentioned before, we are completely test optional and we have been so for four years. This is not a reactionary policy to COVID-19. This is a deeper reflection of our institutional values, um, wherein we feel as though if you're proud of your test scores, you should be able to send them and have them considered. Um, but if you wish you could have done better, if you're not a good test taker, it will not be a disadvantage in terms of either admission or financial aid to apply test optional. Your application is complete without testing. Um, financial aid, I talked a bit about some things that make Whitman's system unique. Um, Whitman does have a really good track record of awarding um, need-based financial aid to students, and that is our priority, right, that we are meeting your family where you're at. Um, there's also merit scholarships, or there are also merit scholarships, but I mentioned need-based first because that is a priority, um, but merit awards are up to 25,000 for academically um, exceptional students. Um, we just don't award them to all applicants, right, because more of our funding is going to need-based aid. And finally, our talent-based scholarships. These uh, neither uh, merit does not require any kind of extra application and need-based scholarships do just require the FAFSA and the CSS profile, which you may be sending to several schools, but talent-based scholarships do have Whitman-specific applications. I would highly recommend students who have an interest in participating in either fine arts, theater and dance, music, or debate um, apply for these awards. Um, there are some requirements once you get to campus um, that you need to do to maintain the scholarship, but none of them require majoring in a given area. So even if you know that you just want to participate in music or theater, but not have that be what you are studying in the classroom all the time, um, the scholarships could still absolutely be for you. Um, with that, I want to draw this component to a close and make sure that we get to answer your questions. I will pass the reins back to Fernando and then um, at the end of our period of time in about 17 minutes um, or 18 minutes, I will um, yeah, say goodbye to all of you, but we're really excited to get to answer your questions and I'm going to move on ahead to our contact information, head to our website and feel free to email any of us. So yes, uh, let's get started with question and answer. So again, feel free to type out your uh, questions. I see there's some coming through already. Um, so let's start with the first one. Um, you showed burritos in the wheat field as a unique tradition. Can you talk about other traditions at Whitman? Um, so Luis and Jordan. You want me to start this off, Luis? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, y'all get ready. Uh, so Whitman is known for many traditions. Some are a bit wacky, but most of them are right. Um, I'll tell you two of my favorite. Um, you just mentioned the um, burrito in the weed fields. 
that's a typical tradition. That's a tradition here. Um, get some friends, whether it be, you know, mid spring or on a, you know, cool summer evening, if you're doing an internship or research here, gather some friends, um, go to Mi Pueblito Taqueria. Um, my favorite thing is to get a California burrito um, and then drive out into the wheat fields. Hopefully no one chases you off their property, but that's fine. Um, and you just have, fr you know, fun, you bring a speaker and you just jam to some hits and you're good. The other one is kind of hidden, but people, some people know about it. Um, in the library, so we have Penrose Library, um, and we have a reading room, right? And the reading room is a, it's a quiet, sacred space. I remember my first year, I was typing an essay, and my keyboard was making some sounds, and people were, like, staring at me like I was doing something evil. Um, but the reading room has a tradition where if you're the last person in the reading room, right? You can basically throw a party for yourself. You can scream, shout, and let it all out. And there's a little logbook that you write your name, the date, what time you were there until, which professor or class had you up that late. And I'm a tour guide as well, so I was giving a tour, and I was talking about that tradition, and the founder, the starter of that tradition, walked by and was like, yeah, I started that. I was like, ah. Um, so that's on my bucket list. Um, but those are two of the traditions that I like the most at women. Next question. Um, what main factors set women apart from other Blue Rocks colleges? I'll give that a shot. And then Fernando, feel free to add on. Um, also, Jordan, you could speak to this too, because though you've only attended one liberal arts college, um, you might have a good idea based on peers and friends. Um, I would say, I mean, on the West Coast, we're really the only elite liberal arts college in like a small town or a more rural location. Um, I think that, and which I think um, is uh, ultimately a really good thing. Um, also based on the size of our town, the amenities there, like I think we're really lucky to be in Walla Walla. Um, I think that, yeah, like our environmental studies program, like something like that, which is like really nationally recognized and even our, our outdoor program, right, um, are like a fact or are based on our location. They're two things that really draw students to our campus. And um, though we have so many other really strong programs, um, particularly in the natural sciences like biology, I do think that a lot of like the ways that we teach are really informed by that location. And it also like with the fact that we're on the West Coast and that we have really most of our students coming from more urban areas, cities, um, and most students with the notable exception of myself do leave Walla Walla after graduation. So you still get that network, you still get that connection to really up and coming and well-established tech hubs like um, Seattle, San Francisco, everything along the West Coast. Like you'll feel like you're living on the West Coast, right, in terms of resources, but um, you're also in a place that's like where the community is, is really tactile and um, yeah, where you feel like you're getting like a authentic college experience too. And let's just quickly move on to the next. We have so many questions coming in, which is awesome. So we'll try to get to all of them as much as we can. Um, is the Garrett Sherwood Scholarship accompanied with a monetary award? And so how much? I can just quickly hop onto this one. So Garrett Sherwood um, is a scholarship. It's not something that you will additionally apply to, but it's just something that you would be considered for based on your common application. So it's essentially like, um, a, a committee on campus um, picks out like some of our top applicants who are making a, you know, a difference in their communities uh, while still maintaining like academic excellence uh, in their high school. So kind of doing both. Um, but it, it is a company with a, a monetary award. Um, essentially, it, it meets full demonstrated need for those students um, with no loans or anything. So it's, it's a pretty, pretty awesome scholarship, but it's very selective. I know last year only it was less than 20 students uh, received it, um, but certainly it, it, it is something that could, could pop up for a few students. Next question, uh, is admissions need blind and do you meet 100% of demonstrated need? That's a great question. Um, the reading, or the review process is need blind, but um, our committee process is need aware. Um, we also meet, I don't know a percentage, but 
Um, this past year, our maximum gap was 3,000. So for those of you who are familiar with that terminology, basically we do have a loan package and a work study package um, that we will include in financial aid awards that totals $8,500. Um, and then on and, and then the rest of the total cost of attending, Whitman would pay for in scholarship dollars um, based on uh, so the, the amount, I guess, that you're starting with is what your family can contribute. Then there's the loans and work study amount, then a substantial Whitman scholarship. However, in some cases, and not for all students, right, we do meet need for um, some students in our applicant pool and we don't have like a defined rubric, so I can't tell you exactly for who, but um, there would be a $3,000 amount that we know that you can't come up with, right, or we know that it's not part of your contribution that we would expect you to get from outside scholarships elsewhere. Um, that's a relatively low maximum gap, but we do not meet need. That's a good question. Do you have support systems for kids with learning differences? And I'll, I'll hop into this one. Um, yet yeah, our Academic Resource Center is a, a wonderful resource for um, any student that might have any learning differences. They're able to provide any accommodations um, that you might require. Um, but yeah, they, they do a pretty awesome job of making sure that we are accommodating to all students, um, regardless of any differences that they might have. Um, the next question, um, well, are loans included in financial aid packages? We just answer that one, but yes, um, we'll move right along. Uh, how many students live on campus? Sixty percent, roughly, currently, like two percent. Um, but uh, we have a two-year on-campus requirement, um, so you will live in probably like a traditional residence hall dorm your first year and sophomore year. Like the residence halls or um, the interest houses that Fernando was talking about earlier became an av become available. Um, a lot of different arrangements, um, and many students live off campus their junior and senior year. Um, Jordan, if you want to speak at all to kind of like the housing trends on campus, um, the flow of housing. Yeah, I can do that. Um, so housing is guaranteed for all four years um, at Whitman. Um, however, in your the first two years, you're you know you have to live on campus, um, and then a lot of um, juniors and seniors um, usually decide to move off. Um, you know, you have a best friend or you have a group of friends, um, you find a house, Whitman owns a lot of rentals, off-campus rentals, and so I currently live in an off-campus rental, which is amazing, by the way. Um, and so there are tons of opportunities to really get off campus and explore the Wall Wall community um, while still being a Whitman student, but yeah. So then that leads us to our next question. It's very similar. So what is res residential life with, or have residential life like? So what is living on campus like? Yeah, I can talk about that. I lived on campus, albeit only for one year. I lived on campus my first year, and then I moved into my fraternity house my sophomore year. Um, and, you know, I have vivid memories of living in Anderson Hall. If you're applying to Whitman and you're choosing residence hall, apply for Anderson Hall. It's the best hall. If anyone tells you otherwise, you're lying. Um, and, you know, I was in DSIC, um, and it was amazing. I mean, we have RAs, residents at assistants and RDs, um, residence directors, um, and they really make sure that your um, residence um, hall experience is memorable and fun. I mean, we had things like karaoke night, trivia night, um, section dinners, um, scary movie nights, just some really cool things to bring everyone together and build that community. And I mean, some of my best friends, my best friend at Whitman was my neighbor in my first year residence hall. So um, definitely Whitman does an amazing job at that community building aspect. That actually leads us to another question I saw that came in a little bit later is um, how many students participate in Greek life? Yeah, keep them coming for me. Um, um, Whitman, we have about 30% of our student body um, participating in Greek life. Um, and I'll just, you know, answer two questions, sort of. Um, whenever you think about Whitman and Greek life, I always have to preface by saying, 
Whitman has about 1,500 students. So don't think of Greek life in the same lens, um, through the same lens as you think of Penn State or a state school. Greek life is really about um, community building. We're a um, social organization, philanthropic organization. We have one of the highest GPAs for any club or organization on campus. Um, so we're, we're one of the biggest proponents of sexual assault prevention, which if you know the history and legacy of Greek life, that's kind of surprising. Um, so um, Greek life at Whitman is, is different. Um, but yeah, about 30%. And what kinds of resources do you have for first-gen students? Fernando, do you want to take that, actually? Yeah, yeah sure, certainly. Um, I think, you know, firstly, uh, something that's really great is all the great academic resources that we have, specifically through an academic resource center. So for any types of um, academic questions or concerns that you might have, that's a great first stop. But then also we do have another great resource specifically through our first generation working class mentorship group um, where first gen students can, you know, they're there to be paired with, you know, an upper class student um, or upper classman uh, who has, um, you know, gone, gone through that they were a first generation student and they're able to kind of provide some mentorship uh, for the, the incoming first year students uh, who identify as first generation or working class. Uh, and that's just another layer of you know, student support to so provide a bit more um, emotional support perhaps. Uh, but then we do also have our counseling center which is open to all students you know, to provide you know, a, a, a bit more on the, the mental health um, supports um, for all, all of our students, but also first generation students can certainly uh, utilize uh, those resources um, for their benefit as well. One thing um, I would add also is for incoming first generation students. I don't know, Fernando, if you were about to speak to this, we do have two fly-in opportunities um, during the school year. So one for prospective applicants. So students who have not yet applied to Whitman, you can um, apply to visit um, through kind of an all expenses paid program in the spring. Admitted students can also, um, you actually don't need to apply for this. You'd be automatically considered with your application, but um, admitted students are eligible for a fly-in. And then there is a third fly-in program over the summer where um, first generation students, um, students of color and also I think it's essentially open to students who would love to visit campus, um, but it will be difficult for their families to make that happen. Um, so this is a chance to like form a cohort, um, though it is like kind of through the lens of uh, like access for first generation students. Um, it's a great chance to get to know current students and other students um, and get familiar with campus before the class, uh, the, before your classes in your first year actually start. Yeah, and then the one other thing I'll add there is that for this fall uh, visit scholarship program that we offer, it's actually going to be a virtual and we will be announcing it uh, this upcoming week, the new changes to that. Um, so be on the lookout for that on our website soon. Um, we have about four minutes remaining, so we'll try to power through as many of these questions as we can. Um, let's see, what's unique about the Whitman experience? That one was a little bit similar to a previous question, but um, do we have anything that we'd want to add there? I just quickly chip in um, community. Um, in 30 seconds, I'd say, um, you know, a question asked what sets Whitman apart from other liberal arts college, um, you know, and I haven't been to many liberal arts colleges, but I assume that they're very similar. You're going to receive an education. Um, that's great. Um, but for me, Whitman's community is what kept me here. Um, you know, just the support, the overwhelming support that um, Louise, Fernando, and myself talked about in this presentation is, I think, it's nowhere else um, has such an equivalent um, community. Um, so I think that's what makes Whitman, the Whitman experience so unique. Uh, next question. What is the process if you'd like to play a varsity sport? Do you need to have expressed this earlier, like in junior high school year? Um, or do you simply indicate it in your application or should you reach out to the coach? And um, I can just quickly uh, hop onto this one. Um, you can um, hop, go on to our uh, athletics at Whitman.edu website and fill out your uh, an interest form uh, or recruit me form uh, where you can tell the um, tell the coach a little bit about yourself, you know, what sport you're playing, what position, those sorts of things, what your experiences are. Um, 
I would say, especially this year, it'd be especially helpful um, because they're not able to travel quite as much as they were in previous years. Um, so they might not be able to see you um, like they used to be able to. Um, so I would definitely hop onto our athletics, um, uh, athletics uh, Whitman um, website and um, fill out that recruitment form um, to get your you know, get get your name out there to some of the coaches so that they can reach out to you and talk to you, talk to you about their specific programs. Right. Um, let me see what other questions. Uh, I have one question for Jordan. When people go off campus, where do they tend to go? Uh, the, like, do you mean like, this is a fully loaded question, but um, generally if you're talking food, there are like tons of restaurants down, downtown. Um, Y'all are probably too young for wineries, but uh, that's where I go. Um, and then if you're talking, um, you know, just weekend trips, people go hiking in the blues. If it's winter, people go skiing. Um, my favorite place to go if I really want like a big city kind of effect, um, Portland, um, Seattle, they're just a few hours away as Louise mentioned. But Wawa is so uniquely placed that there are tons of things to do. You'll never feel bored unless you want to be bored. Um, so that will never be a point of, you know, worry. Um, there are tons of things to do. Excellent. And we are approaching like the very end of our time. I am, that, but that's a great note to end on. Um, I hope you've taken down our email addresses. Um, if we have any remaining questions, we will answer them by email over the coming week. Um, and we want to thank you all so much for joining us today. This has been a delightful way to start a Saturday morning, I might just say. And um, we really look forward to connecting with you soon. Please do check out our visits. And thank you, thank you so much to the Whitman team for sharing their Saturday morning with us and all this valuable information uh, to the audience. So as, as you exit the Zoom webinar, you will be taken to a quick survey. It's only four questions, so we'd love to hear your feedback regarding this particular session. And as I mentioned in the beginning, we are recording all of these sessions and posting them to our website where you first registered. Um, and feel free to check out more sessions through Tuesday evening. We have many opportunities for you to connect with other colleges and universities. So I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. And thanks again once uh, to the Whitman team. Have a great one. Bye.